Good morning, broadcasting live on Zoom as we gather for worship with myself and Manor Road, live with Dr. JJ. We honor and thank the Huron Wendat Nation, the Metis Nation of Ontario, the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, and Six Nations of the Grand River as our community partners and traditional inhabitants, the lands of the city of Toronto, the region of Hamilton and Durham region and surrounding areas. May we be filled with the breath and fire of spirit connect to the heartbeat of the ancestors as one. And a special welcome to all those who gather today. We have a, lots of special things happening at Matter Road, especially the birthday of Susan Johnson. Say so a special happy birthday. And uh, Tom, can you lead us in singing happy birthday? Perhaps Susan Johnson? I'll mute. <laughs> Today. I'm sure it's somebody's birthday somewhere soon. We always did. Oh, I can try that. I'll do. Can people hear me? Uh, yes, JJ. Perfect. Okay, and I'm. So we'll sing happy birthday to Susan, happy birthday to Susan, happy birthday, dear Susan Johnson, happy birthday to you. And also it's Simon Morris's birthday this week too. So can we slide the next slide? Okay, and we have Hired the Manor at two o'clock and then we have Little Rainbow Fish at 10 o'clock and Noonday Prayer. Slide the next one. And then we have our Rosie Society at three o'clock. And for those who are on Zoom, we're having, we're, we're, this week you'll notice we're having two separate retreats to celebrate like, those who will gather on Zoom at five o'clock on Wednesday. Where do we go from here? And then you'll notice on Thursday, we have Bible at the Manor and Yoga, an in person retreat at the Manor at six o'clock with light food and refreshments. I encourage all, all those who can attend, we'll have, we'll, uh, encourage people to RSVP. As well as if you're not able to attend, we would love to hear your input of where do we go from here. And if we could switch to the next slide, Friday speaker series, Architecture and Heritage in Toronto with Julia Brady Shaw. And then we continue with Sunday of the Matter next Sunday with communion. And you'll notice what we're gonna do is repeat what we did last year, we'll have a pride parade outdoors, six o'clock, wear your pride colors. And we have Liz Smith and Chrissy with a red Mustang convertible. And that's going to be a wonderful. So we say happy Pride Month for Manor Road in Toronto. And remember, if you need any get tests or masks, uh, speak to Marianne in our office. And there's a special ecumenical Pride Party. That's at Deer Park uh, United Church, which is actually at Calvin Presbyterian in the neighborhood. And you're more, uh, again, it's a, it's a free entry, but if you'd like to make a donation to the ecumenical chaplaincy at U, U of T, you can do that. Okay, our next slide. And you'll notice June 20th, is, you can do, watch this virtually or in person, a barn raising to celebrate a launch for Stone Soup Network. And we'll be featuring music from 
come from away, as well as part of the wonderful event and Alexa Gilmore. And for our minute for mission, remember we have a wonderful pantry keeper keeping stock at the pantry. Please contact the office if you'd like to volunteer. And that means either purchasing food uh, for and uh, making sure it gets filled. And you know, and, and this is quite simple. You go to the store and you can buy a, some soup or cans or tins just to make sure everything's filled. Thank you. Next, how about next slide? And uh, over to Susan Johnson. We can't hear Susan. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. church on fire strike it as the lightning hits opposing spot burn away the structures and consume the shame of our holy system come in Jesus name come 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 in Jesus name Now over to Susan. Sorry, Susan. Holy Spirit, who comes to us in breath, visits us from the throne of heaven, and sets us aflame with amazement and joy, you open our paths to new visions and guide our feet deeper into your wisdom. Give us faith to trust your presence through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Joanne. May the angels of light listen for us this day. And may the spark of God's beauty dance in the eye of those we love. May the universe be on fire with presence for us this day. May the new sun rise and grace us with gratitude and let earth's greenness shine and its waters breathe with spirit. And let heaven's winds stir the soil of our soul and fresh awakenings rise within us. Amen. Let there be light. And now over to Susan. Without your power, O oh God, we are lost. We have done the things we would avoid and what you desire we have not done. By a purifying fire, transform our efforts. Guide us into honesty and compassion. 
so that filled with your peace, our dreams and visions may be one of yours. Amen. Everyone who calls the name of the Lord by the power in whom we live and move and have our being, I pronounce to you the complete forgiveness of all your sins through the Holy Trinity, one God, whose mercy is everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And Allison, are you there? Yes. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? One sec. We just want to make sure I can add to the spotlight. There we go. And there we go. We have you and me and everybody else. So just making sure. Okay. Can we slide to the next slide? Now, guess who this is, Allison? <laughs> I recognize that person. I love uh, you. The TV in the background kind of gives away the era there, John Joseph, Tell and maybe black hair and beard too. <laughs> I, I, I was 24 and there was a youth group in Hearst. That was my living room. And the, 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 the fun part is the, the lovely lady on the left is I left the screen. I, I got to conduct, officiate at her wedding a couple of years ago. And the other lady in the turquoise, she was the maid of honor. And so it was a quite a, Powerful moment. Yeah, it was a fun time. I think we had just made popcorn. We were doing something. It's quite wonderful. Nice. Do you remember where, that was 1989. My word. Okay, let's slide forward and look at the furniture. Now, also to celebrate Pride Day, this is a Pride a couple of years back. That's called the Muscle Clergy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Created myself and. Uh, Another time, another day, another where we had microphones and things. It was quite a great. So, well, how, how, so how do you get ready to celebrate Pride? What did you do a lot this past week, Allison? Well, um, to, on Wednesday, the youth got together and we painted a banner that we'll, we will unveil um, at our Manor Road Pride celebration. And it was great. They were really enthusiastic and everybody worked together. Like literally everybody was painting this banner. So I'm excited for everyone to see it. Wonderful. How about you, John Joseph? Did you do something special? Well, let's see. Well, we, yes, we had a, a lovely wedding here in Chicago and we had a blessing of a lovely child. My, one of my, actually she's my great niece. So it's been uh, very powerful to be, one was a niece who got married and the other was a great niece. And it's quite an honor to celebrate that as a, and since we're getting ready for Pride, there's lots of great celebrations. On June the 18th, we're going to have an interfaith Pride Fair, as well as uh, many other wonderful. And on June 26th, there's a parade where we can gather. We won't be having a bus, but we'll be walking together and shouting. And our lovely Miss May is making these little hearts. Let's say Happy Pride Toronto from Manor Road United. So I think May is making over 900. So we're ready to we're ready to uh, 
be the uh, we'll call it the the pride army of compassion in a good way. Yeah, remarkable, remarkable. Yeah, so you have a prayer for us this morning, Alice. I do, I do. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, you have blessed us with many teachers, including our own John Joseph. Help us listen for your voice, whether it comes from the Reverend, our holy book, or just being in nature. You are there calling to us, calling us to truth, calling us to peace beyond all understanding, calling us home to ourselves. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Allison. And we have the next slide. Perfect. Okay, I'm just going to take you off. Mute. Bear with me. Okay. And Holy Wisdom, you are the pillar of fire that leads us into each new moment of our lives. By the power of your spirit, settle now into our hearts and illumine your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we get to hear from our dramatic reading group. <laughs> now the whole earth had one language and the same words and as they migrated from the east they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there and they said to one another come let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly and they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar and they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there, were the, now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and they were be bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, 
and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you will do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The word that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father's in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the work themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, I remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Hear the wisdom told to us through the ages. It is a gift on this day as we experience the wonder of Pentecost and celebrations. And Andre Kabitsu who wrote that drama, and we had many voices, is a reminder of the spirit that's growing here and now. Let us pray. God, all of us bring many gifts. May we continue to discover you at the core of our heart, at the edge of our community, igniting and growing and speaking through each of us. Amen. So celebrations here, we have a firm Pride Sunday for the United Church of Canada and also the 33rd anniversary of my ordination. And you'll hear a bit more about that. And it's an honor to be here with you today when we think of the theme of building. Now, I'm a person who likes to go to Home Depot and Lowe's and whether whatever project might be, but there's something about shaping and forming. It reminds me as a child where I discovered Lego and Multifit and Meccano. And all of us shape and form something in the here 
and now come let us build it's that intimate moment of connection and relationship in the here and then now and the here as we heard in the passage that was shared by our four voices of people they spoke one language now there was a great piece actually on one it was a cbc podcast that talked about it's interesting so often we think of all the life we have arriving where we are now but there's a theory because there were, humanity appeared about 300,000 years ago and suddenly it seems odd that only 11,000 years ago they figured out civilization. But yet that's where the story of Babel is more or less placed. But the idea of having one sense of common understanding and growing and being was seen as a, as a, as a challenge, almost as a curse then. But yet we know it was about that sense of the reign of God breaking in because we have at both ends of the story in the early Testament and the newer Testament a sense of return to listening and learning now. It's something we're striving for, are we not? And we think of this, they all spoke with one, like they hear the words, come let us make bricks and form and shape and fashion and build again. And on this weekend, many have turned their eyes to England and the platinum jubilee of Queen Elizabeth. And some are challenged by the summer celebrating this. And But yet when we think of the journey of the Queen Mother and what it was might have meant during World War II when the history of England, we're, we're rethinking all of that now, aren't we? But we still stand with the legacy of Queen Elizabeth, uh, is still reigning, but still part of our lives in many shape and form and fashion. But, and she continues to, to be a beacon for many, but some for, there's more of a long distance relationship. But somehow we know that as we celebrate the 70th, it will never be the same as it has been, but there'll be a new road to tread on as we move forward. But as we hear further in the passage about making bricks, we hear that in the, in the passage of, 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 of the Pentecost passage, we hear a sense of they spoke in different languages. And don't we know that today, not only the languages literally, but whether we speak fast or slow, whether we speak in social media, whether we speak in millennial or boomer, we're all coming at it from so many different directions. But we hear also what we call the genuine news the sad news, the news about Rob Elementary School this past week where children tragically died at the hands of a gunman. Teachers died. And we're reminded as we stand and listen to this tragic story how we need to change who we are and where we're going as people of God, not only across the border, but here and now in our own communities. And we need to look at what it means to be listening and learning and growing again. We hear the words in the gospel, love one another. How do we love? How do you challenge us? Where's the invitation to open door or walk through that gift of love in the, what we call the sullen seas? But even Philip in the passage today says, show us God in the here, in the now. I remember hearing in the wonderful play, Les Miserables, show us God, when you love another person, you see the face of God. Whether it be your partner, whether it be your family member, whether it be your friend, whether it be a stranger you're reaching out to and offering a drink of cold water or a food, some, something for food or a place to live, or a listening ear in the here and now. And today we hear a passage that's so often is discovered again and again, and the wind came, and the fire came, and the spirit came. And we hear this wind and this fire and the indigenous voices, not only in North America, but around the globe, as they remind us then and now how we can hear God shout in the rain, how we can hear God sing the sound of a bird, how we hear God whisper in the seas. God's voice is strong and clear in the wounded and the healing in the hills and the valleys of today, because we are the builders. We are the people ready to guide and hold. We are the people who are speaking one language. We are people building bricks. We are the people speaking many languages. We are the people with love and gifts for each other. There are people called to be the peace in the here and now as we face the lies and untruths that people shout in our globe, as people want, some want guns and some want violence and we stand strong and we want peace. This past Friday, 
Susan Johnson's brother, proclaimed a message of peacekeeping, not only in Canada, but in the globe we live in. The whole earth had one language. You need to pause and listen for that, what it meant to come let us build in that light, in the constellations, not only in the heavens, but in here, here and now, in the people that we share and grow with together. Come, let us build. As we learn from people like Sufi mystics, as we learn from each other in that gift, as we celebrate Pride Month and also Asian History Month, where we hear the voices of people at the edge to touch our heart in the here. And then now it says the spirit will speak and teach us, touch us even now as we grow and live together, touch the core of who we are, where we can go, and where we can be. We are the builders. They spoke in one language. Come, let us make bricks. Come, let us listen to the different languages and be loving and caring for each other. Come, let us learn to grow again as people of God in the midst of all our struggles. Come, let us be peace as in the new blood we share. Come, let us build. As we hear beyond the language we know, but learn again the language of the heart. Come, let us build. As we take the bricks and make bridges over these many troubled waters that we have, over the violence that is living and breathing in our world, and we come again to be the living compassion. Come, let us build and listen to the people that speak other tongues. Come, let us build and be peace and compassion today. This past week, just a week ago, we celebrated the wedding of my niece, and many gathered in the west of Chicago to honor the, the milestone for their family and for the new families, for people joining in the here and the now. One key part of the wedding was a hand binding where we took a cloth and we spoke of so above and so below and so behind and so before us. Today we are people joined together in that cloth of community where each of us brings a thread of our great grandmother and great grandfather, our great aunt and great uncle in the here. And now, the whole earth had and does have one language. And just last night, we celebrated the blessing of young Annabelle Rose, who was a one year old. We had the honor of celebrating the officiating at the wedding only three years ago. And as we gathered and proclaimed her gift of new beginning, reminded that all of us have new beginnings in the here and now, that Pentecost is speaking to us in the here and now, because today, Come, let us build. The whole earth had one language. We are the builders. I celebrate 33 years of ordination in many communities. I remember learning in my first community that I had an internship, a fishing village over 1,500 miles, or 2,000 kilometers east of Toronto. And it was there I learned, even before I was ordained, I'm a remnant minister, not by virtue of what I do, but by virtue of the gifts that people share with me. Because I remember being a student minister and people didn't call me a student minister. They said, you're the, the, you're the minister. And I said, I didn't take that course yet. But yet somehow in the core and heart, they saw within me gifts. So I realized then and now in every community I've shared that ministry is the relationship of the minister and the people and God woven together so tight and fast. My first community was the fishing community. The second community was at Timothy Eden as the youth minister. The third community was Saskatchewan, and a, living in a town of 500, which is a large town for Saskatchewan, and settled in a town of Hearst, north of 12 hours north of Toronto, in a, in a community where lumber is the key industry, and then near Wonderland, and then New Horizons Pastoral Church, and then at Mono Mills Pastoral Church, just before that, near, or, near Orangeville. And then to Metropolitan United in downtown Toronto for a dozen plus years. And here we land together at Manor Road United Church, at the Manor to share and grow together, to learn how it is to be people again in community as we look at worshiping online and in person and discover the most greatest gift that we give to each other is the core of compassion in the here and the now. The greatest gift that Manor Road has given to, to me is the trust and risk in the here and the now. Together we are called, together we grow. 
And I wish to share with you one of the very special poem that touched me so long ago that speaks of this, speaks of this relationship of in the here and the now, of from the from this detail of God's spell. And it says this: the words are beautiful city. Out of the ruins and rubble, out of the smoke and out of our night of struggle, can we see a ray of hope? One pain, the thin ray reaching for the day. We can build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. We can build a beautiful city, not a city of angels, but a city built for men and women. We may not reach the ending, but we can start slowly but surely mending, brick by brick and heart by heart. Now, maybe now, we can start learning how. We can build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. We can build a city, a beautiful city, but we can build a city for men and women where your, our trust is all but shattered, when your faith is all but killed. We can give up bitter and bad battered, or we can slowly start to build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. We can build this beautiful city, not a city of angels, but a finally a city for men and women and all together. We are the builders of living compassion and God's grace and love for all today. With the great diversity you have created, Creator, we come to you with both the joys and the sorrows of our hearts. We are grateful for the gift of life and the joy that it can bring, for families and friends who love us, for allies who stick up for us, even when we cannot risk sticking up for ourselves. For the great diversity you have created in our world, we pray for those who suffer from discrimination because their gender identity or sexual orientation or their skin color, who worry about their employment or who cannot find a job, for those who must hide who they are to find housing, for those who are not safe on our streets, for those who don't feel safe in their place of worship. Help us to end homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia, and all forms of discrimination and hate. Show us the way to make this world a better place for all. Remember to take this time for our life and work and offering. Thanks be to God. say a special thank you to the music of Tom Marcaccini and his lovely wife Allison who remind us that it's not a solo or a duet, duet but it's all of us bringing our voice in song and ballad and lyric together. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, them to, up the Lord. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right to it give God right thanks. Give God thanks and praise. Make us thankful every day, O God, for the gifts that alight upon us from your bounty. Guide us to use these offerings to your glory for the health of your people and this creation. And your light will wake forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us and the glory of God will be our rear guard. joy for the gift of the Holy Spirit together. Let us pray for the well-being of the church, the world, and all in need, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the wonder that erupted on the day of Pentecost, for the birth of the church, for the gifts of amazement and challenge, and for all the witnesses whose lives have been altered by your power alive in our world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the many peoples of this earth whose visions differ, whose languages offer special insights, whose ways of worship and compassion feed our own, we thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth itself, through whose creatures we see your love, and whose winds we remember the coming of the Spirit, we thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With them and with confidence that you hear our prayers, we commend all for whom we lift our voices, trusting that you give more than we need. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us, and the glory of God will be our very own. Deep in our hearts, there is a grateful for the confounding experiences the Holy Spirit's presence creates in our lives, for the marvel of new visions, for the wisdom in prophetic words, and for the prayers of your great high priest. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us hungry to protect the health and nurturance of all people. Let your fire burn in the leaders of the nations, in governors and mayors, on city councils and school boards. Guide the lives of peacemakers, soldiers, philosophers, and pull the skills and passion of all your people for the sake of our delight and the nourishment of others. Make us grateful for the confounding experiences the Holy Spirit creates in our lives, for the marvel of new visions, the wisdom in prophetic words, and for the prayers of your great high priest. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us hungry to protect the health and nurturance of all people. Let your fire burn in the leaders of the nations, in governors and mayors, on city councils and school boards. Guide the lives of peacemakers, soldiers, philosophers, and artists. Pool the skills and passion of all your people for the sake of our delight and the nourishment of others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give comfort to all people who are refugees from war and famine, those who are lonely and frightened, ill, imprisoned, homeless, or without work, and those who face death today. We pray especially now for those we name you now silently or loud. And for me, I pray for my brother's family. It's been a year since they lost their matriarch and they are still feeling the pain. God, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Amen. Knowing it is your Holy Spirit who has flowed through your witnesses of ages past, we give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us. As a mother nurtures her children, let us pray. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth in peace and freedom sustains our hope and comes on it. It's a breath that we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all this evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And thank you all for today, especially to those who are helping with worship right now and the gifts and wonders of Carol Foley and, and Justin and Chetta and Sharon Smith and Tom Marcaccini and Allison Marcaccini. And we say celebrations to Mike Russell and Joanne Nicholson and Susan Johnson and, and Mike, Mike Russell who edits the program each week and, and the gifts that many bring and Betty Kalman who shares congregational care Many voices bring courage and hope to us all now in the name of God, Christ and Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I'm just going to turn off the recording.